All right. Hey, everybody. I am Michael Pacheco, and this is the Remarkable Coach Podcast. Today with me, I have Thomas Chappelle. Uh, Tom, formerly an active Marine, dedicated his life to service inside and out of the military. Uh, through a loss of a business and becoming homeless, he learned about struggle. Uh, he found that passion can be fleeting, but discipline and grit can lead to growth and successful goal completion over time. Thomas Chappelle, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Honored to serve here. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Um, so the first thing that, that, that clearly jumps out to me is you lost a business and became homeless. And through that, you kind of found your path. Um, I'm going to ask you to start there because that sounds like a fascinating place to start. <laughs> yeah, so it actually was uh, definitely a learning moment. Um, I don't know how many of your listeners or uh, other, other folks that you know that has actually been very successful. We had a million dollar business at one point and in revenue a year, uh, which isn't bad for a startup. And we literally ended up uh, blowing up from the success level. We just got in deeper than what we could handle. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, that was building luxury homes for, for folks uh, that wanted to kind of live rugged. We did uh, log home builds mm -hmm. and it was amazing. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was financially rewarding. And I was way too young to have that much money at one time. <laughs> <laughs> before, before we go any further, can, will you come out to Washington and build me a log cabin here? <laughs> <laughs> sure, no problem. <laughs> okay, awesome. Got that out of the way. Continue with your story, please. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, eventually we had, um, it, it, it kind of was, uh, a, a, a tough situation. The partner that I had, his wife had suddenly died and it caused a huge problem. I mean, and unfortunately he had to step back and, uh, his part of the, of the, uh, of the build was like the most important, you know, he actually ran the construction sites and did that. I did the business and sales, and then I was acting as their gopher, making sure supplies got there on time, things of that nature. And unfortunately, it was one of those situations where uh, the teams. Uh, this is where that team, team trust build, and things like that that you've got to that you got to work through, and all just wasn't there because I wasn't seen as as anyone other than the business guy that answered the phone and did brought the coffee and donuts, right? So uh, it kind of taught me a real hard lesson. It was tough. Uh, we did unwind. We paid back all of the money for the contracts that we had that we didn't uh, get to fulfill. Plus a lot of penalties. That's what eventually led to me not having a place to live. And uh, I literally lived out of my car for several months and kind of had to make a choice. I had you know, about 20 bucks left in my pocket, had to decide what I was going to do, either eat or try to figure out what I was going to do next. So I went and bought Windex and a bunch of newspapers and went from store to store asking if I could clean their windows. By the end of the day, I had a couple of hundred bucks in my pocket and started out the next day on the next little venture, just building my way back until I uh, ended up out railroad engineering. And made back then 10 bucks an hour wasn't bad, bad pay. Uh, it was 20 hour days. <laughs> so, so you didn't have free time or anything else to, you know, and you were too tired to kind of do anything else. But did that, uh, got run over uh, while I was out there, got hit, had to learn to walk again. It took me about six months. By, by a car or by a train? It was a trailer that was connected to a train. It was a utility trailer. It's about 2,000 pounds, so it was a whole lot of fun, you know? Yeah. There's nothing like seeing your toes stick up in the air and your face down in the dirt, if you can imagine that that position, uh -huh. you know? Um, but, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, again, you know, you can either get mad, sad, or find try to find the silver lining. And so that's been my goal is try to find the silver lining, learn from it so that you move forward. 
and that particular situation, uh, it caused a whole lot of reflection. I mean, if you can imagine being where you can't really move for like three months, you know, minimum, and then I had three months to try to figure out how to walk and I couldn't pay for physical therapy at that point. Mm -hmm. Uh, I lived out of my car and, uh, went to a lake and I just swam every day. I would go down into the lake and I would just swim back and forth, uh, with my legs flopping behind me because they couldn't only one leg kind of work. The other leg didn't work at all. And I had a part-time job working at a hotel washing their sheets and and all. And then they found I could keep books. And so I kept the books and that's how I kind of restarted from there. Ended up taking me on to the Marine Corps whenever I got well enough. And then I, uh, that moved me, graduated top in my class, moved me to uh, the the DC area. So you went into active military duty with the Marines after that accident? Yes. Wow. And I've, I've got some permanent nerve damage uh, uh-huh. from the accident, that, but you, uh, this is where I told you that part of the story of grit yeah. kind of gets you through. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that, that's, that's where that grit comes into play. Yeah. And uh, I, I make it a major part of my company. As a matter of fact, the logo on my company is, is a rhinoceros. Yep. And so that that rhino stands for you know have two inch thick skin so most bullets will bounce off right yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> and you know just kind of set the blinders forward and and keep moving and don't listen to the detractors you know you got to keep doing uh, you got to serve your purpose yeah. and that's what eventually led me into the coaching side of things of you know trying to help people get to where that they can serve their purpose and I do that a lot. Uh, through the government, where uh, I'm working with technology leaders. Uh-huh. And, you know, the reason that I call it dynamical change earlier, whenever uh, I contacted you guys, was because, you know, dynamical change is that unpredictable, constantly shifting change that kind of goes on uh, that a lot of people don't know how to handle. So I think I've had a little bit of experience with dynamical change whenever I had to learn to walk again, <laughs> you know, and I, and then go through the Marine Corps and then rebuild back my life and, you know, go from homeless to, you know, now I'm a blessed man. I've been able to, I live in a six, 6,300 square foot house, you know, a lot of hard work, but it's been, it, it's been very nice. Right. Um, but you earned the hell out of it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, it took a lot of years and a lot of sweat, uh, but you can't. You got. You got to be a bit fearless whenever you're working in that in that environment. Because uh, in the case with the government, whenever you're doing that level of coaching with them, you're literally talking to leaders that have millions of dollars or billions of dollars in some cases. So they can go to jail based upon the choices that they make. So you know. Uh, my company is heavily involved in decision making with the government and how to make better decisions. And the coaching that I that I work with them on is all based around that. And you have to take more of an agile uh, perspective to it. So, uh, and you have to kind of be willing to step up because I've been held to account before as well on this. You know, it's like you know, coaching at that level is not easy. Um, and I think that's what uh, I think that's why this is a good niche uh, is because not everybody's going to want to cross that threshold because it's it's a pretty serious game at this level. Yeah, that's an that's an invitation that not everyone accepts. <laughs> right. Well, I think that, right. that's an amazing story, um, and I love that. Uh, I love the whole thing. I think there's I think there's a lot of you know younger folks these days, not to sound like the old guy who's ragging on the new generation or whatever, but, um, you know, I, I, it doesn't sound like you take anything for granted and that you, you've got that the grit and tenacity to, to push through the tough times. That's, that's amazing. I want to circle back to, uh, real quick, why, 
you, you mentioned that so a lot of that stuff led you into coaching. Why, what specifically led you into coaching? Why did you get into coaching? Well, I think it's because I've always had a lot of great mentors and coaches myself. And, and whenever I say coaching, I'm using that term loosely from the effect that they didn't charge me anything, you know, um, you know, I got out of the army 21 was dumb about business. And I remember the, the day I decided I wanted to do something in business. I was literally putting insulation under somebody's floor, you know, and preparing it for, for winter. And the gentleman that I was doing that for was running a company that was making a million dollars a month mm -hmm. at that point in time. And I asked him, I said, well, how do I get to where that I could do something like that? And so over years, we developed a friendship and, you know, we did stuff back and forth for each other. So you kind of develop over time, right? You develop a, a body of knowledge. And you found, a, uh, you found a mentor in this guy. Right. He was very much a mentor. Then I, you know, I found other mentors throughout my life as well, that especially whenever I was starting this business, because, you know, government advisory and, and, and all is not easy. It's not an easy business to get into. And, uh, it can, it can be, uh, you know, tough because like in some cases, some of your margins are like six to 8% margin. You know, that's not good. I mean, when you think about your retail markets are like five to seven, right? You're right there <laughs> because there's, you know, a thousand other people that will love to take your place. Yeah. You know, so uh, when you start looking at that, you have to look at it from the perspective of what was my purpose. Mm -hmm. And part of my purpose is that I survived all those things to kind of, uh, you know, uh, get to where I am today. And I feel like that so many of the people that I work with, they're obviously younger than me most, most of the time. Uh, but secondly, no one's really kind of had that tough conversation with them that, you know, saying you can make this, you just need to put the stake in the ground and claim this lot for yourself. Mm -hmm. you know, this is your gold mine. Let's, let's figure out how you're going to get the gold out, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and, once they get to that point where they feel comfortable with staking the claim, yep. then, you know, it kind of moves rather quickly. Right. So uh, they take ownership of it. And I think that, you know, that's what all coaches and mentors and, you know, today need to be doing is kind of helping each other, helping the folks that they coach with find that purpose and serve it to the best that they can. And, um, I just felt like I had enough of different challenging experiences to kind of do that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I had a gentleman tell me that he was scared of practically a lot of stuff that, that he had to do. And uh, I shared the story with him whenever I used to do rock and repel, I used to rescue folks off of the side of the mountains mm -hmm. and all when they would fall. And I said, you know, I said it was scary one day whenever I took a five story fall and I had tagged into a tapped into a gentleman that was that had fallen off the trail and literally got wedged. And he was like twice my weight. And we fell off and went five stories <laughs> with, with tied to a rope. And that was the only lifeline that we had. Yeah. And uh, and I will tell you. You, you, you kind of get in touch with your purpose real fast <laughs> at that point. It doesn't, you know? doesn't take long, does it? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take long. It's a, it's a straight shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, you know, I think Steve Jobs said it best, because and a lot of people misinterpret what he said. You should learn to love what you do, mm -hmm. and then it will become your passion. Yeah. Yeah. That was that, that. That's what I think that people, you know, too quickly they try to say, "Well, my my, my passion is underwater basket weaving, mm -hmm. and that's what I want to do." Well, great. You know, what's the market for that? Mm -hmm. How is how are you serving others in that way? Because right. you know, so that's what I think that we kind of have to look at. And you know, 
I'll be honest, I probably am not the coach for everyone because oh, sure. I'm kind of wrecked. I can be intense. I can be funny, but I, I'm, I'm intense too oh. because that's where my background come from was high intensity. Well, so, you know, um, and I think that's why I got involved in that type of dynamical change because I'm used to chaos and I'm most calm when everyone else is losing their head. Yeah. Yeah. You've, you've kind of acclimated to, you know, high levels of change and high levels of stress around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, um, it's, it's funny because uh, it's also made me enjoy every minute of life more. Mm -hmm. And I, I think if I could pass on any lesson, you know, you're fixing to have a, ch a child here soon. And mm -hmm. I'm very happy for you. Um, love every minute of it. Yeah. Because 18 years sounds like a long time, but it's, <laughs> it does, it like really that. <laughs> it's, it's not that long. Um, I've raised four kids. Previously, I have two kids left at home, you know, been very blessed. And I will be the first to tell you that those memories I cherish more than mine. You know, and at the end of the day, seeing the legacy that you leave, I think that's what I think that's what it's all about. You know, what you guys are doing, great legacy. You're helping people, you know, get their message out. Um, I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. For for our listeners and viewers out there who aren't aware, uh, Tom and I were chatting before I hit record um, just about some new stuff happening in my life. And, and my wife and I, we just moved to this new property and, and she's pregnant with our first 26 weeks along at this point, I believe. Uh, due date's late February. So we're, we're very excited for a, an amazing year coming up. So yeah, thank you for, for those words, Thomas. I do, I do appreciate that. And, and I'm just an aside, not really related to this podcast at all, but since we're just having a conversation, let's do it. Yep. I, I grew up without a dad. Um, my, my mother and father were never married. When my mother got pregnant, he told her to have an abortion or he was out the door. Um, mm. And so, you know, growing up like that, I had, you know, I had hockey coaches that were, that were father figures. I had uncles that were father figures, um, but I didn't have that, uh, you know, consistent, always at home father. I just didn't, didn't have it. And so for me, like with this, with all this that's going on with the baby on the way, it, it's, it's a non-negotiable for me to be the best possible father that I can be. It's just, it's, it's non-negotiable. Um, yep. So it's. Just uh, give yourself some space. Get, allow yourself to kind of, yeah. it's okay to feel frustrated once in a while. <laughs> that it will happen. <laughs> No, I've got this under control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I don't, I don't expect it to go smoothly um, at all, but, but I do, uh, I do expect to be present and I expect to, to savor, you know, if not every minute of it as, as many, you know, as many nine out of 10 minutes, 99 out of a hundred minutes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, and, and, you guys will over time figure it out, um, it, you know, each each side of what you're going to do and, and how you're going to do it. And, yeah. and that that's that that that'll be, you know, you're going to be a great dad. I can feel it. You're going to be a great dad. So that, um, that's awesome. I appreciate it. You know what you don't want. I do. Yeah. I've got I've got a great you know, I've got a great picture in my head of, of what not to do. And I think sometimes that can be as good a barometer as knowing what to do. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of tools that that have you start from what you don't want mm -hmm. and work your way back to what you do whenever people can't identify what they really want in life. Sometimes it's so, a little more clear to identify what you don't want. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But to, to try and scoot a little closer back to the back to the topic at hand, what does so are you more of a business coach or more of a life coach or are you kind of a holistic? You work with both. And, and also on top of that, who is your ideal client? So my ideal client is uh, usually found in the technical space. Okay. Now it can be government or it can be commercial, but I really kind of understand the challenges that they face and all, uh, and the how much hyper 
you know, hyper innovation just seems to disrupt so quickly their plans mm -hmm. and, and kind of deal with those areas. So, uh, you know, I've got a technical background, so I understand where they're coming from. I can speak the geek, mm -hmm. it, uh, you know, to a certain level and have found that, you know, that avatar is more uh, relational to me than, uh, than, you know, maybe somebody from a more pastoral background or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would say that um, probably business and, and leadership is, is where I focus more on. Mm -hmm. I tend to stay out of the life coaching bit simply because of, again, I'm a different grade of salt. So I'm not always palatable. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not table salt. Uh -huh. I'm more like the I'm more like the gritty road salt that goes on the road that makes your infrastructure still work. All right. <laughs> so so Not a you know. perfect analogy, <laughs> but I see where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, you know, that, that that's where I kind of see myself. And uh I I love helping entrepreneurial type folks that are in the technology space as well. Do a lot of volunteer. Uh, mostly with uh, helping youth, teenagers, uh, as they're preparing to kind of go into life. That's all volunteer stuff, but uh, I love it because it kind of gets you back in touch with, um, you know, with not just becoming young yourself again for a period of time, but I look at it in two stages. One group that I, that I coach with and advise and consult with, they're the current future. They're the near future if you look at it, right? The youth that I volunteer with, that's the further future that I'm working with. Yeah. So if you can leave a legacy with both, then your influence is going to become their influence that becomes the influence that they put into others. Mm -hmm. And that's what I look for. You know, nobody will remember me in five years after I'm gone. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But if I can put a seed that grows, that causes someone else to either help them achieve more success or make it more possible for someone to even turn their life around, doesn't matter. Then I, I left a legacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I love that. That's that. that, that I'm, I'm about legacy building at the end of the day. That's great. Within... Within the tech space, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of space in tech. Are there, is yeah. there a specific like, you know, industries within the tech sector that you work with? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Or, so, or, or, very, yeah, very good. Um, I would say it's in the decision science space. So in decision science, you have the big data. You also have the little data, right? Uh, I have a master's certificate in AI and ML. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of running programs to, uh, you know, business development, things of that nature. So I can bring a lot of tools to that side. And it's also good having a nice size Rolodex so that whenever I have, you know, somebody sitting across the desk saying, been trying to solve this problem. And I say, you know, let me put you in touch with this other guy. I know him. He's government too. Let's get a conversation started. See how we can solve that problem. You know how how the that builds relationships when yeah. you do that. That you're able to reach out to. I mean, being being a connector is a big thing. And sure. I tell people if they want to do coaching, I said learn how to connect people together. Mm -hmm. You know, because I said you'll get more people wanting to work with you then. Yeah. Then you know. If you're just trying to focus around who can I coach? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Nice. What does uh, what does a typical um, engagement with you look like? Is that uh, so? There's always the discovery process, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we work on discovering. I have a few tools that I use. Some of them I've made for myself. One I love. I think probably the most is I call it the three act play where we look at your skills, uh, look at your passions, look at where you're trying to get to. And then I have you match all those things together. And then we use uh, math just to basically kind of 
And uh, I used to teach at a university whenever I developed this tool. And so I run over 400 people along on this tool. And I'd say 90% of the time, they did not get the answers that they expected. And that's what I loved about the tool was that, you know, um, I remember working with a gentleman that he had just left government going into his passion, studied being a chef, wanted to open up a restaurant. So worked with him, getting through his business model, worked with him, trying to get his mindset right for it. And then I kind of noticed a few things. So I started asking questions and I was like, hey, do you mind taking this, this test with me? By the time he got to the end, it had nothing to do with him opening up a restaurant. And he actually, it geared him toward what his new business that he opened up and, and all, which was to go inside homes and cook, you know, as a private chef for, for folks and all. That led him going out to California and he eventually got out uh, on some of the national food food shows as one of the chefs that cooked for the, for the top names. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I mean, it was... It was amazing. And he contacted me and said, I would have gotten into so much debt. <laughs> and and during the pandemic, he's like, you saved my life. You know, and I was like, no, I said, you saved your life. I just had a tool that allowed you to see that. Yeah. You know? I just I held up the light for you. Help you see it better. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I said, we just put it all up on the board, you know, so you could see and think the right. Restaurants are hard. <laughs> so, yeah, that. That's a nice one. Um, and I feel honored that I got to work with him. Um, yeah. He's a, he's been a good guy ever since. So. Nice. What, uh, what sorts of things, what sorts of things do you struggle with as, as a coach, specifically as a coach? Mm. I'm an action oriented guy. You're like, you're so, like, you're like nothing. I don't struggle. I got it all under control. No, 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 no. I'm an action oriented guy. And I think one of the things that uh, I kind of struggle with is, you know, I'm part of a group at some, a group of uh, Christian based coaches and I've kind of told them several times, I'm like, I'm not into the fruit fruit. <laughs> and, and, and uh, I said, I said, I'm about getting from point A to point B and you know, kind of like, uh, you know, some of the, I uh, can't think of his name now. No, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very action focused, trying to get you through something, mm-hmm. not, not so much trying to push you along, but trying to get you to do something that actually creates some little change immediately. But I'm trying to do it in what's most urgent, and most important in your life. Mm-hmm. I, I, I see a lot of um, in the group that I'm in, I see from time to time where people are talking about the what's not urgent, what's not important. And that's fine because most people consider that the low hanging fruit. I kind of move up to the upper right hand quadrant from my consulting base and say, if we choose the low hanging fruit and that upper right quadrant, you'll see a more dramatic change. And, you know, what does the, you know, what does your client want? They want low hanging fruit, you know, it's not important, not urgent, or most important, most urgent. And I would think that most clients want to see some sort of progress rather quickly. So I ask a lot of, I ask questions. I don't drive questions, but I tend to look at it from that whole discovery session. Everybody says I shouldn't use an hour, but that whole discovery process for me is an hour of me kind of getting to know so that I can come back and do my homework to prepare to help you get to that next step more quickly. Who says you shouldn't use an hour and why do they say that? Uh, I've been told many times that uh, I give too much time. And uh, I tell people that uh, it's, it's not about I only get this time once, right? Mm-hmm. But it's if I'm using it to invest in people at the end of the day, that matters more. Now, we all have to make a living. I get that. But 
if in my mind, if you lead with the with the dollars first, mm-hmm. your client picks up on it. That's that's kind of what I was going to say is if, if you're if you're leading, if you're giving a bunch of time away at the beginning in service of a specific outcome and you're going to make those dollars on the back end, then it's it's yeah. a loss. It's a loss leader. Right. It's simple. It's simple business stuff. Yep. Yep. And I agree. I agree. Um, some of my coaching friends would not agree. <laughs> but but I look at it as, you know, they have to play their hand. I have to play mine. And um, I'm very comfortable with that. Yeah. You know, I, I'm in this game for the long term and about really affecting change in people's life. I'm not doing it just to make a living. Uh-huh. That's a that's a privileged place to be. I think that's 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 an awesome place to be where you can you know, your, 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 your outcome, right. That your desired outcome is, is something bigger than the paycheck, right. That's everybody wants to be there. So, yep. great. Yeah. So I came from a broken home as, uh, a while back and, uh, one of my stepdads, I had many, uh, his parting wisdom that he gave me as I was entering into the military is, and I've like, used it so much that he told me he was very religious. He was a pastor. He Mm -hmm. told me, he's like, God gives the very best to those who leave the choice to him. Now in my early life, I didn't practice that much, but as I got older and made a lot more mistakes, I suddenly realized the wisdom in that is that, um, and whether you believe in a higher power or not, it's the, it, the focus is, is that the wisdom is not always within. Mm-hmm. The wisdom is also in the environment that you're in. Mm-hmm. So you have to look broad, more broadly out to, mm-hmm. at that wisdom. You know, and for me, it was, you know, it was very much a case of that's how what led me to this work was is that, you know, I really opened my eyes and I just started saying, okay, where, where are people asking me to meet them? most mm-hmm. and that's what kind of led to this so no it sounds crazy but it's my story and i'm sticking to it can you i respect that can you elaborate on i want to go back i want to circle back to that 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 piece of wisdom that gift from your stepfather can you elaborate on 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 what that means maybe give us another an, an example it's yeah uh, sure go ahead sure for sure, sure. So I had wanted to, to after, after blowing up my business and all and coming back and going through the military again, getting plus position back here into the DC area, which was, I never thought I would go to a city, <laughs> but that's where I ended up. Um, I started kind of taking a lot of reflection because this area is, you know, highly political. Everybody kind of knows everybody and everybody's got an itch to scratch. Right. And, uh, and all, and I was like, I don't know why I belonged. And so I started, I joined like a little running club and we run these trails all the time. And it just kind of ended up that while I was running with, with a lot of these folks, we'd talk, like what we, you know, talk about here today, you know, different business ideas and all. Mm-hmm. And I'd kind of find myself kind of giving some mentoring, some advice and some different things. And then just asking questions to kind of make people think mm-hmm. uh, about, about things. Cause I told him, I said, it doesn't matter what my answers are. What matters is your answers, because at the end of the day, you're not adopting my answers. You're living with the, the choices that you make, Sure, you know? So, um, I said, uh, actually, I had a professor friend of mine. He came to me. He's like, have you ever thought about this? And turns out he was just starting at, at coaching. And I said, no. I said, that sounds hinky. I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, I'm not a soft guy. You know, I'm this Marine guy. Every, nobody would like me to be that way and all. And I went on this big, long run. And I run a running to, uh, to a friend of mine. And she told me, she's like, have you ever thought about coaching? 
<laughs> and again, and then I went on a big, huge hike. And then the third time, and I was like, okay, what's going on? <laughs> this has happened three times in my life. Uh, you know, what's going on? Let me look at it. And so I went to a friend who gave me a battery of tests and is like, hey, according to this, you would be good at these areas. And it turns out coaching and, and was one of those areas. And I was like, all right, well, uh, so the environment was giving me signals gotcha. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And I had to kind of, again, I hit my knees that night and I was like, okay, God, I submit. This is, you know, a solid purpose and went forward and I haven't looked back. I love that. I, I believe in that 1 million percent, but I have a different approach to it. For me, I have a, a reminder on my phone that pops up once or twice a day. I don't know if it's once or twice a day. And it's just a simple question that says, are you receiving? Mm -hmm. Which is which is that, right? It's the same. That's thing. amazing. Are you, are you paying attention? Are you paying attention to what's happening around you? Are you, are you yeah. those signals? Are you receiving? Um, yeah. You know, it's every day. No, and that's very interesting. That's very interesting because the way I said it, you have to be observing. The way you said it is that it's coming into you mm -hmm. for you to, in order to receive. So if you're always on that receiving level, it's harder to miss. It's easy to miss. You know, I, I, my eyesight's gotten bad as I got older. So <laughs> I'm, I can tell you, it's easier to miss things that way. So it's, it's just a way I like that. It's a way to frame it, right? You, you, That's awesome. Observation. I'm, I'm gonna, observation I'm gonna is a little heavier, but just are you receiving? Are you, are you paying attention to shit as it comes in? Pardon my language. <laughs> I, I'm, I know. That's fine. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to use that if you don't mind. Yeah, no, please. I'll give you credit. <laughs> I'll give you credit, but I'm going to use that. I, I took it from one of my coaches. You know, I've got, I've got coaches too. So I, I, I get none of these ideas are original. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's awesome. I, I, I learned something tonight. Thank you. Oh, I love it. Um, cool. Let's see. What else do I have? Is there anything uh, that, that you want to bring up or, or talk about specifically that, that we haven't touched upon yet? I think I would tell anyone that's no matter what business you're getting in, whether it's coaching, consulting, advisory, open up a restaurant, retail. Don't let fear stop you. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to be smart. You got to be, you got to be capable of seeing signs on things, but so many people don't do things because they start fearing what the potential that doesn't always come about. I mean, uh, Everybody was telling me whenever I was trying to start my consulting business, oh, you shouldn't be an entrepreneur. You should just stay. You've been a political leader. We've been, you know, a, a couple of administrations ago and, you know, you did well, you did this, you could go speaking, you could make all kinds of money, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was like, well, what is it about this? And he's like, oh, well, there's so many failures in the business. And I think it's because, one, you obviously need the skills you need. You need the niche in the market, right? But if if you allow fear in, it will have puppies, <laughs> and it will just keep multiplying on you uh, to where it will paralyze you. Puppies. Yeah, I know. I, I, we had I, I have some, we had one recently. She just uh, she just passed. But boxer, I love I love her. And I miss her so much right now. So yeah. her bed still sits right here by me. <laughs> yeah. I haven't uh, haven't gotten over that. So they're 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 pretty great. Yeah, uh, I want. Well, I love boxers. I want to add one thing to if it's all right to your, yeah. your your comment about fear, and that is that for for those listening, fear presents itself in many many ways. It's it's you're not always walking into something literally afraid, um, and, and I can speak only from personal experience that, you know, for me, for example, fear frequently presents itself as perfectionism and I won't, uh, I'll, I'll hold off mm. on taking action until it's perfect. And I, and I, and of course you end up, nothing's ever perfect. So you never take action. Um, so life is messy. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And don't and that's and the with the fear thing. Don't be afraid to be messy, right? Um, right. Because you can always course correct as you as you move forward. So yeah, that's all. That's all I was thinking. Um, Tom, You're a very wise person, man. You're a very wise person. <laughs> I appreciate that. I receive that and appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, Tom, you've got one hour uh, session that you would like to offer our listeners. You want to talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure, sure. So, um, yeah, I'm always uh, always up to giving folks some some help where I can. I'm here on this planet to serve. So if they would like to get out to me, um, I can, if you don't mind, I can send you a link to where they can get a hold of me get a hold of me, but uh, they can also reach me at tom.chapel at breakthroughstrategiesgroup.com. And uh, I will, uh, I'll I'll send you guys a link to the my calendar so that they can just pick it up from there and, and use it as well. You know, it costs you nothing. And I think uh, we'll learn more about each other in the process. You're giving it away, people. Do it. Schedule it now. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll add that link to the show notes for sure. Um, it'll be in the YouTube notes, the show notes on the webpage, et cetera. Um, we'll get it up there. Okay. Tom, I do want to apologize. It's Chapel. I think I said Chappelle at the beginning of the show. No, Chappelle is actually the correct pronunciation. I just use Chapel because I've worked in the South over here. So. Gotcha. Okay. Dig it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and also for those that want to check out Tom's website, it is breakthroughstrategiesgroup.com. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Awesome. And we will include that link in the show notes as well. Uh, Tom, it has been a pleasure. I love, have loved this conversation. I love your mission. I love your voice. I love the way that you speak on things. Um, I think you and I share a lot of the same values. I think you and Boxer share a lot of the same values. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for allowing me to be here to serve. Awesome. And thank you to our viewers and our listeners for joining us. We will see you again next time on the Remarkable Coach Podcast. Cheers.